Hi, I am Dr. Subhana Gurunath and I am a fertility specialist practicing in Cloud9 Maleshwara. Now, this is another very important question. So that's because you know, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions amongst the lay public thinking that IVF is very risky, very painful and it has a lot of side effects and things like that. So uh, it's very important to address these issues before embarking on the IVF process and it's because of these myths and misconceptions that a lot of people hesitate to start IVF itself and uh, especially when it's really necessary. So before we begin to understand the risks, I must say that IVF is actually much safer than undergoing a laparoscopy or even getting a caesarean section done. So coming to the first misconception, a lot of people think that hormonal injections that we give have a lot of side effects. These are actually very purified medications which are actually very well tolerated and hardly have any uh, problems. You can take up to about six cycles of IVF stimulation without any long term side effects. So the second thing is the egg retrieval procedure itself. So this is relatively simple, so there is no cut or an incision made in the tummy. So it's just a needle that is going through the vagina and where the eggs are sucked out. Sometimes there are risks of bleeding or infection but the risks are just less than 0.5%. The next important complication of IVF is hyperstimulation, ovarian hyperstimulation. So as I earlier said, we need about 10 or 15 eggs, that's all, to do an IVF cycle. So you don't need too many eggs. But there are some people who are predisposed to produce too many follicles. So this is called ovarian hyperstimulation where the ovaries enlarge and they are filled with multiple eggs. So we get almost 25, 30 or 40 eggs sometimes if there is overstimulation. And this causes the whole ovary to enlarge and it increases the amount of estradiol in the blood and the capillaries become leaky and there is fluid accumulation in the tummy and around the lungs and causes a lot of problems. So in this regard, today ovarian hyperstimulation must be prevented and should not happen. So it is very important to predict who are the people who are likely to develop hyperstimulation before and to take adequate steps to prevent these problems, So which we always do. So the first step is to use mild stimulation protocols and secondly to use a lot of alternative medications which help us maintain good pregnancy rates and prevent these problems from happening and your doctors will be doing the same in order to prevent these kind of complications. Following this, now the outcome of uh, IVF in terms of miscarriages or ectopic pregnancies. Miscarriages rates are almost the same as your, what you would get. So the older you are, the more likely you are to miscarry. So your miscarriage rates are same irrespective of the method that you use to conceive. Ectopic pregnancies, slightly higher risk is there in IVF uh, pregnancies, yes. And uh, following this, the last uh, complication is there is a lot of uh, misconception that IVF children are abnormal and tend to have a lot of birth defects and they don't do good well at school and things like that. But uh, today, what you have to understand is that even in children who are born with natural spontaneous pregnancies, there is a 3% chance of abnormalities in them. In IVF conceived births, the risk of these birth defects go up to about 5 or 6 percent. So this is probably due to a genetic kind of factor that, is, that may be present in some couples like severe male factor or those who are undergoing ICSI. But otherwise, the rest of the general population, the risks are almost similar to that of natural conceptions.